This is Station Enschede, Stationsplein, in the Netherlands. This is the view that you're greeted with when you first walk out of the station. It could be so much nicer. How? Well, let me tell you. Station Enschede is located in the east of the Netherlands, close to the German border. This station is located directly in the middle of the city center, giving it a phenomenal location for both commuting purposes, economic purposes, and social purposes. Here on the left is the actual train station, and here on the right, where my mouse is, this is the bus station. This configuration of buses so closely tied into trains is a topic for another video, and it is quite common to see in the Netherlands. If you follow my mouse cursor now, this area of the station is called Stationsplein, and it is going to be the focus of this video. This video will talk about how to design this area to better serve the public needs, especially from economic, environmental, and social perspectives. When I visited Station Enschede, the very first thing that I noticed when I walked out was all of the bicycles. What a classic and beautiful Dutch scene, and it is something I'll talk about later in this video. Next, I noticed that all of the buildings are made out of concrete and brick. This for me brought a really cold personality into what I thought could be such a warm and beautiful place. Finally, speaking about warmth, as can be seen by the puddles on the ground, I was here after a rainstorm and the paved surfaces here really detract from the stormwater runoff management and negatively enhance the urban heat island effect, but it provides a good surface for people to walk on and buses to drive on. But before we think about that, let's look at the bicycle. Specifically, let's think about how the bicycle falls into the context of the accessibility of Station Enschede. How do people get to the station? Here on the left, we see people cycling, and in the background, people are walking to the station. All these modes of transport have their own dedicated infrastructures and rights of way that must be considered when thinking about how to improve Stetson's plan from a placemaking perspective. And I think that this video really summarizes this relationship very, very well. Dutch railway stations have insane civil engineering that has gone into their accessibility. Here, for example, the bi-directional red pathway has been designed to connect the station to the road for bicycles. So the needs of the bicycles have been considered against other transport modes such as people walking and cars driving on the street. These needs must be also considered when redesigning Stationsplein. This is the bus station, Station Enschede, directly next to the train station. During the peak hours, all of the slips that we see here have non-stop bus circulation and there are counts of people everywhere. It's quite a scene to see. During my modeling process, I focus more on the Stations Plan, this side of the train station, to optimize the paved surfaces. This is because if we go back to the bus station, the bus on the left demonstrates that these vehicles have very large turning radii and therefore need all of the available surface area to be able to effectively maneuver. Therefore, the only feasible stormwater solution is in fact the gutter on the left and there can be very little, if anything, done to further improve stormwater runoff. But wait, that's only one side of the station. Let's take a look at the other side. And here's where we get into our number one missed opportunity of the video. Take a look at this building front. It's so ugly! There's absolutely zero engagement between the pedestrian and the building front, and even if you wanted to spend money here, you can't. And this is what I noticed when I was here and what I undertook in my modeling process. How can people get engaged with their surrounding buildings and direct them to the city center? And perhaps the biggest surprise I had when I came here is to see the number of people that are trafficking in and out of this area is absolutely wild. And this alone should be the number one reason to redevelop the buildings to make them more engaging with the pedestrians and people of this area because there's so much potential money that could be spent that's not being spent right now. Shifting our attention to the curb, you're going to notice a very inconspicuous drainage system consisting of slats running parallel to the curb. If we look at the area on the left with all of the colorful markings on the ground, that area is already half a meter lower than all of the surrounding roadway. Therefore, it is very interesting to exploit this elevation difference and put a wadi or a swale to collect the rainwater. And as previously mentioned, there is a very high thoroughfare of people moving in this area, be it through the bicycle, just like this guy, 
the car, or walking, people want to be here. They want to spend time here. They have no choice. So why not facilitate that with the design of an urban wadi, or something that will allow the people to really engage better with this space? Let's take a step back. So far, I've showed you quite a bit of information in this video, and let's understand how this falls into the greater context of Satin and Tchene. Here in GIS, I've outlined a map of what I think the areas of relevance are relating to this video. Here in this spot, I very smoothly and nonchalantly walked outside to show you the view that you're initially greeted with when you step outside of the station. Here, I showed you the bicycles being parked on the ground. Here, from this vantage point, I showed you the bus station. Over here, I showed you that, in fact, there is another side to the station. Here, I showed you the curb and the elevation difference in the ground surrounding this area. And finally, here, with my back to the city center, I showed you that, in fact, there is a high value and a high potential for an urban placemaking of this area. Let's move on to the hydrological side of things. The municipality of Twente and Enchede, especially Enchede, have made a very comprehensive plan called the Water and Klimat Adapti Plan. That's the best Dutch that I've said. And this is a very interesting document that goes through all the steps that Enschede is doing to really retrofit their existing systems to combat future climate change with respect to water demand, stormwater runoff, and water quality. I've linked this document in the description below, so in case you're curious, definitely go ahead and check it out. It is a very comprehensive document that outlines the stepwise approach that Enschede is taking to make their systems resilient for climate change. I'm going to go ahead and put up the map again before we continue with this video. This is absolutely insane and blew my mind when I went to Enschede. The first time I went to Enschede, I've been there twice. The first time I started in the north of the city, I exited the station on the north side above the railroad tracks in this picture, and I went and I uh, did a little adventuring on the north side, and this is incredible. The city has really invested a whole bunch of money on the north. They've done LID, low impact development. They've bulldozed and redeveloped a whole bunch of land, and they have now single family homes. So it reminded me the most of America. They have suburbs there, uh, really these single family homes that you see. But also they have some insane metropolitan solutions that are of a low scale and high tech. For example, you will see in the next few videos, I have this, they have rain gardens, swales, they rethink the role of curbs, which I'm a huge fan of, but they also redeveloped their streets and they've made them more compact and they really thought about parking and the role of the bicycle. And so they've repaved everything, they've repainted everything. It's insane on the north side. However, on the southern side of the city, you don't have that. On the southern side, they have almost no renovations made so far, especially with their stormwater retrofitting. So I think that the southern side, and if you go there, you will see this, on the southern side, there's a whole bunch of potential to redo their rainwater and stormwater management systems. But on the northern side, they've really done a number to improve this. So as you can see here, now we're on the north side, and this is directly across the street from the station, right here, and here you can see the curb cutouts that I get so passionate and excited about, and you will see such measures such as off the street swales and rain gardens. Let's take another look. As I told you, there is a lot of housing, redevelopment, and new development in Syria, and if we quickly grab the frame, boom, that's what I'm talking about. So now we have a screenshot, let's go ahead and talk about it. Here and here, you will see outflows. This means that the greater urban catchment, meaning the greater urban watershed that is past this building itself, all drains out into this swale, into this wadi. The Dutch people call swales wadis. And what that means is you have a lot of better stormwater management because you decrease the quantity that goes into the sewer system. Another favorite technique of mine is called curb cutouts. You have them right here, here, and here. And those, what they do is they really rethink the role of the curb as it relates to stormwater, effectively decreasing stormwater flow into the street and again into the sewer system. 
this type of technology gets me so excited because you have these random green spaces in your city decreasing the urban heat island effect, increasing evapotranspiration by using the water that is already flowing on the street, making the area more attractive and more sustainable. And I think they did a great job here. What I mean when these areas make the city more attractive is look at the green here. You have such a beautiful offset from the curb to the storefronts and this is really complemented by the amount of green spaces here. And if we take a really close look at the curb cutouts I'm talking about earlier, you see that the curb is made out of pieces. And right here you see a very prominent curb opening and look at how well worn it is from the water. All of the water that runs off from the street goes into this detention sort of swale and this really does a number to hold the water and retain the water so that it can evaporate into the city more and so that the municipality can have a little bit more control over its sewer system and I think it's really quite beautiful. This is the last urban swale that I will show you before I talk about how I used all of these designs in my own design of Stations Plein. Now I'll pause the video here. This particular swale got me so excited and still does to this day. I was standing here filming this, I said I couldn't believe it. It was unbelievable how beautiful this is. This is beyond a work of engineering, it is a work of art. This swale is incredible, it's insane and if you are ever in Enschede, I highly recommend taking a walk and going to this swale. It is really a beautiful visitor attraction on its own. And in the next few videos, I'm going to take you through where this is, how this looks, and why this swale looks how it does. And this swale, you will see, it continues all the way past down the street, past the turning cars. So let's get into it. What makes this swale so amazing, first of all, is that we have to appreciate its sheer size. This thing is massive. I would say it has about a 1.5 meter depth and about a 3.5 to 4 meter width all the way down. And it has to be the size. It has the water running off from the road in addition to the water being pumped into it from the city center for the purposes of retention and groundwater infiltration. So in addition to that benefit, you also have vegetation including grass, bushes, and trees growing here, increasing local evapotranspiration and decreasing the urban heat island effect. Finally, this could be a placemaking, and it is a placemaking destination, separating the people from the right from the cars on the left, increasing the local safety of the pedestrians and increasing the value of the properties in the area. The last video I will show you before I will move on to the cornerstone of this video itself, my own Stations Plan model. I took this video, you see those people right there? I only took this video to show you by comparison how deep this urban wadi is. And I find it fascinating how they were able to build next to such a heavily utilized and heavily densified traffic road this urban wadi, I think that's amazing. How do they do that? <laughs> it's so beautiful. And it is able to exist, successfully grow, and handle all the stormwater despite being in this very bustling urban environment. So, with all of this inspiration taken from wadis and swales all over Enschede, this is the final design that I believe Stations Plan of Station Enschede should look like. With my cursor, I am now showing you the elements and buildings that I imported and built using a 3D modeling software as well as the locations of video clips earlier in this video. Finally, here is the outline of the swale that I believe would best serve the interests of Station Enschede from a hydrological, urban placemaking, and economic perspective. But perhaps better looked at from this view, we see that these buildings in my model have a mixed-use development style to them. As mentioned earlier in the video, the current existing buildings around Stations Plan are currently being dramatically unutilized as there is no person, pedestrian, to building interaction. In this model, I really created the bottom floor of these buildings to have businesses such as restaurants, shops, or any other services, whereas the second, third, and upper floors could be used for residences, offices, hotel space, or any other purpose. And finally, with my cursor now, I am showing you the path that people could take to get from the station better to the city center. An additional facet of my model that I played around with is this bridge that we see here. My computer mouse is now pointing out the location of the two underground parking garages for bicyclists underneath Station Enschede. And the question then becomes, how can the flow of bicycles to these garages be better optimized? Well, this bridge should do the trick. And as we pan and tilt the camera, more so from a hydrological perspective, we can define the parameters that make up the swale. What do I mean? Well, 
we have the ability to control the different types of plants, flowers, bushes, trees, grasses, weeds, soils that can be planted and put into this swale and all of them have different parameters on the local environment such as evapotranspiration rates and shading. Additionally, we can control the outflow rates and the configuration of the outflow schemes so the swale has many different flexible parameters that are sure to enhance the local environment. The last aspect of my model that I want to talk about is from the placemaking perspective. As we saw in the intro of the video, the views that we are greeted with when we step out of Station Enschede, like my cursor is doing now, are not the strongest and not the most welcoming. However, if we were to take steps to construct this model or a similar green area, this would be a very strong first impression of the visitor of what the city of Enschede is about, and it would also be a pleasant experience for business owners, residents, and any other people in this area. And as we pan the camera, you will be able to see that I've implemented sitting devices such as benches. This gives the people the opportunity to physically engage with their environment and feel the physical benefits such as cooling that the swale will bring. The sitting devices can also be swapped with restaurant seating. Therefore, the swale is an excellent economic investment as the swale can bring a placemaking feeling and a return on investment to the local business owners. Whoa, and with that, we've made it to the end of the video. Definitely subscribe to my channel, like, share. This is the first YouTube video that I've ever made, so I appreciate it if you guys watch this all the way through. You are all legends. I'll catch you in the next one.